Replace Color is a really nifty little tool for changing a color inside an image very, very quickly. It's a two for one tool. You get a selection function and you get a hue and saturation correction function. Now before we start to use this, a couple of important points. One is it's a destructive function. You'll need to make a copy of the layer you're working on if you want to keep an original. So I'll make a copy by dragging my image onto the new layer icon. So I've now got my backup copy. The second thing is it's a global tool. If you say I want to change a colour, and in this case I want to change the colour of this little patch of orange in the toenails and on the ears of this elephant my son's lying on, you'll need to actually restrict the use of the replace colour function to these areas. In short, you have to make a selection before you activate the tool. Now, on the OK side of this, the selection doesn't have to be terribly accurate. So I'll just quickly set this up. I'll just select that ear that I'm going to replace the colour in, and that one. Don't have to be terribly accurate, but so long as you capture the entire tonal range that's going to be affected, you should get a good result for this. And now we're ready to go. Go to Image, Adjustments, and Replace Colour. You get a dialog screen which is in two parts. The Selection section, which is essentially the same as the Colour Selection tool, which you can see elsewhere on the Tutorial Bucket site, and the Replacement section, which is pretty much the same as the hue and saturation controls. So, to make our initial colour selection, you have an eyedropper. Click on the colour to be replaced inside your selected area, and you get a little thumbnail preview. Now this is all very nice, but it doesn't actually show you very much, so here's where it gets to be fun. Go to the hue, and just change the hue. Whee! Look at that instant colour change. It gives you a good idea as to how accurately the colour has been picked up by the eyedropper. If it hasn't picked up every single shade, and that's usually the case, use the plus eyedropper to add in any missing tones. Now I haven't quite got all of the toenail in here, so you can click and actually drag across all of those colour shades, and that should then fill it in. In addition, you've got a fuzziness control here, which is like a fine tuning control. If you squeeze the fuzziness up or down, you include or exclude the range of neighbouring colour tones. So if you're having a problem getting a really accurate selection, the trick is to turn the fuzziness down, like so, then use the plus eyedropper, drag it across the shades that you're trying to pick up, and that should give you a much more accurate selection. Then just use fuzziness for a fine-tuned final selection. Cool. The third eyedropper is the minus one. If you find that you've selected a colour shade that you didn't mean to select, you use this one to deselect it by clicking on the offending colour shade that you didn't mean to select. Now, if you just watch what happens when I click on this purple shade and drag across, I've effectively taken away the entire selection. So I'll just re-include the selection again with plus, drag it across, and that's all included again. Okay, now the hue, as we saw before, is for the colour. You can click and drag on the sucker, and you'll get the exact colour you want. Saturation, to control how rich the colour is going to be saturated, pull it all the way down, it goes to grey. Pull it all the way up, and you get insane super saturated colour. I'll pull it down to about minus 30, I think. That looks pretty good for me. And lightness, as the name suggests, is a brightness control. Pull it down, it goes dark, but it looks very fake. Pull it up, it gets very light and also looks very fake. So the trick is don't go to minus 100, don't go to plus 100. You'll need to hang around somewhere between 50 and minus 50. Generally looks pretty good. Uh, if you need to go lower in the colour control for this, you might find another technique may work better. Hue and saturation or even a selective colour might work better than using to replace colour tool. But if you stay within that range, it'll probably look pretty good. So I'll set it to about there. And that is it. That's all there is to it. It's very fast, very neat, and very easy. One thing that this tool does really, really well is extreme red-eye problems. This is the go-to tool 
when you have a problem that can't be solved with your regular red eye tool or channel mixing. There's a link to that tutorial on this site and you should have a look if you want to get more out of the replace color function.